and hello good evening uh, welcome to my page and today I want to talk about uh, professionalizing of football in Uganda okay everybody has been uh, we've been talking about this professional football we have uh, complained a lot about how our teams perform how our teams perform what kind of football we play we have criticized everybody the coaches we have criticized the federation and everybody but the principles are very simple or might be very difficult to achieve if we need uh, to professionalize football in our country uh, first of all the laws of the country what laws does the country have as regards to the professional sport does the country actually think that uh, professional sport is an industry that needs to be looked at does the country think that um, professional sports can bring income to the country or professional footballers can actually pay more taxes than the average person so we have to look at that aspect because the laws of the country must be made in a way that uh, they promote the industry to earn because once, once the industry is is earning then uh, we can call that professional then the laws there must be laws to make sure that we all abide by them not that one person abides by them or two people abide by them then the rest of them flaunt them because professional sports must be guided there must be guiding principles football is a very big industry so if we talk about professionalism that is one thing that we have to talk about talk about the laws the country has to make these laws and make them clear that uh, people can earn in this then the laws of the federation the federation must also have the laws and guiding principles that guide this game as a professional sport and not an amateur sport because at the moment uh, the Federation of Ghana Football runs football purely as an amateur sport because you you can see sometimes the things that come out of the Federation and see and you say okay this this is actually not backed by professional uh, a professional kind of approach to things like for example recently there was um, a circular that was passed and the circular was talking about uh, youth players graduating to senior sides yes that is good in principle that is very good but you can't make that a law that i have to have two players from my junior team to play on my side i mean that should be something that i the owner of the football club the coach can determine that i actually can graduate these players to my team it is good for the federation that young players will come through but in professional sport that cannot work because professional sport is about winning Professional sport is about being the best. So you cannot uh, make a law that is almost amateurish in nature. And you say that uh, you must have two players from your youth team on the bench. You must have this number of players from your youth team from last season. I mean, that is not uh, professional. I don't think that is uh, professional. You can't say that we are professionalizing football by making such, such kind of laws those things come by by themselves if you make the fundamentals the fundamentals of the game then people will find out that actually graduating youth players is actually very profitable you don't need to tell them because uh, the world wants young talent for tomorrow so anybody who has a team will not at any one time not want to have these youth players but now you're in a pro in a, an unprofessional setting and you put um, and you want professionals the game then you you bring sort of a amateur kind of law in a sort of in court a professional league i don't think so those kinds of rules and regulations have to be in a professional manner you must make it in a professional manner and uh, to move forward then the other thing uh, when we talk about professionalism then you talk about the interference for example of the federation the federation in uganda virtually interferes in the professional league of course there's only I, I, I presume there's only one because big league is not anywhere close to a professional kind of setting maybe the the premiership has semblance 
semblance. You can't even call that a, a professional league, but it's, it's, it has a semblance of professional league. So the interference, how, how does this work? Uh, imagine a time when the league is being played and then the federation says, no, you, you have to stop this league because we have, a, for example, a tour. The national team has a tour uh, of a sponsor. A sponsor has a tour and uh, the national team suspends the league in a professional setting. How does this affect? Because these clubs are owned by people, organizations or what. So uh, the gist of the story is that these clubs have to make money from their tendencies, get collections uh, from their merchandise and what. And this can only be sold during match days. If you have no match to sell, you have no income. Now, to have a business that is being regulated by somebody else, again, that makes a serious problem because I have my business, I have my club, and I am supposed to run on schedule. If I tell my fans that I am having a football game, it, that game must take place. It must take place. Because if it doesn't take place, in civilized societies, you'd actually have to refund uh, tickets if you have already sold them because I, I see some clubs are now trying to sell seasonal tickets. Yeah, that's a good thing. Now, if you sell a seasonal ticket to me and you tell me there's a match on this day and that match does not take place, I mean, you have inconvenienced me, you have caused me financial loss. And people don't don't tend to think about it because if you take away a football match, for example, how, how, how much do you cost the people who are running the sport? The club. The club has to pay uh, the players' allowances on a daily basis. Where are they going to get this money if they get collection? Because get collection is the biggest source of income in Ugandan football. Where do you get this money? What about the other small people we're not talking about? There are some small guys who are selling granites at the football stadium, soda at the football stadium. You know, uh, the guy who prints the tickets at... Uh, I mean, there's so many things, implication in professional football that we don't seem to want to understand and go there. So somebody makes seats and makes rules and regulations without considering all other factors. Eh? They just so if we want to the interference of the federation has to sort of seize and let somebody run this league for them. Or the, the club owners. Let the club owners run the league themselves. Because it it, it is of their interest that this league is run unperturbed. Eh? Because in the event that you have for example a television schedules. You have a television schedule and the television has been saying that um, there's a game to be played on uh, Friday at this time. And then out of the blue you say no, the game won't play. Of course, we, we saw this happening sometime about a few years ago when uh, Supersports was in Uganda. Of course, this is a professional setup. And these people buy their space and they want the game to be taken. So I, I remember there was a time when there was a standoff. This game will be played, it won't be played. This game will be played, I am in charge. So that kind of, we must grow over that kind of thing and say, let this game run. Let this industry grow. Okay? And if the industry grows, then most probably we are going to do what? We are going to benefit from it as uh, a country. And the people who play in it, because this, this thing helps not only the footballers, the, the coaches, even the parents. I mean... Football helps a whole kind of generation. So if it's pull a run and it's not professional, then we are not going to get out of it. Then that is why most times people will think that the only way they can earn from this sport is by playing for the national side. That's why we all put a, uh, the players, the coaches, everybody is itching for the national side because that's the only time players get paid. And yet the game itself would be able to pay them if we run the game well. Then, the other point would be the independence of the league body. I have been in uh, this game for quite some time to understand now that actually the league body is not independent because they cannot make the... the, the right now in uh, Uganda, I don't think there is a fixture for the league and this league is supposed to be kicking off sometime. So, if you have no fixture, then in a professional setting, how do you... Um, Project. How do you make projections as a football club? How much money do you want to spend this season? On what time? Because people start, for example, I see people starting pre-season training. It is terrible for, for a club to start 
uh, pre-season training without knowing when the kickoff date is. Because, uh, I mean, pre-season should be six weeks. Six weeks to the kickoff of, of the league. But most times, uh, Ugandan football clubs go almost two months, three months in pre-season training. Why? Because we, we are not structured enough. One, because the league, the, the body that runs the league is actually not independent. The people who sit in Nambole. Actually, most times you go, you move to them and ask them questions and they cannot answer. And yet they should be the ones having the answer. The fixture. How can the fixture be, uh, be a problem? Because the fixture should be out. Right now, should be ticking out and say, okay, my first game is probably in Arua or in Imbarara. Or, so, because all that has financial connotations. Because if you're going to Arua and taking a team of 18 plus uh, officials, so probably you're taking a team of about 25 or 30 people to the game. That, that's money. That's money. So, it's not money that you just wake up in the morning and say, okay, now I, I want this money. I am going to take this money and uh, uh, from where? Where are you going to get it from? So you have to plan for all these things. So you have no fixture. So how do you plan for you? You can't plan precision. You can't plan your finances. I mean, everything becomes symbolic. So if you want to professionalize uh, uh, the league, our league in Uganda, those are the things that the body that runs football must be running the game. They must be running the game. Because if it's being run by somebody else de facto, then there's, there's a problem because what are we doing then? You find that the league, the, uh, some, uh, one time we were told that the league could not be because some clubs do not, for example, have um, uh, the things that are, are needed to be part of the league. And yet we have seen most times clubs were playing without anything. They play without anything. So what are we doing? So we must have this body, independent body, to verify who plays in the league? Because financially, it is it has to be the first priority in a professional sport. Is are these clubs financially viable to actually play the league? Then you ask yourself a question: Does this league even need to have, for example, sixteen teams? Does the Ugandan league need to have sixteen teams with the kind of resources that we have? That is why we have unpaid players, unpaid coaches. And pay stuff. So why? Because these clubs are not financially available, and nobody is scrutinizing them. And then the ones, some of them are pressed, and some of them are let go because by the end of the season, some clubs had not even paid their players for six months or so. But nobody, nobody was putting a finger to that. So we need to professionalize this game. The the independence of the the football body must be independent enough to come and check all these things and what. And then the rules and regulations of the league. The professional league rules cannot be cut across and say uh, you have league rules that cut across from first division to to the Premier League. The Premier League rules have to be different because uh, uh, there was a, a scenario last uh, in mid-season where teams were trying to transfer players and uh, there was this that you cannot transfer uh, a player, you cannot uh, transfer a player if you have a player in your system. I mean, you must uh, make sure this player leaves your system by uh, putting him to another club. I mean, this is the, we had an argument with uh, uh, Madame Shanaruli, and I'm like, professional football cuts from football into uh, now real employment. The employment uh, rules of the country must must come into force because. You cannot say, I cannot leave this club unless I get another one. Suppose I, I, I decide to rest and say, I'm not going to play. So if I rest and I'm going to play, I, I still remain a burden to this football club. What about if the club actually doesn't need me? The club does not need me. What, what happens? Because the only way uh, the Federation can intervene is to say that, okay, pay him his money. For as much as you don't want him, pay him his money. Pay his contract off or something. But the club might actually not want you. Or the coach might say, I don't need this player. And if I don't need this player, it means that he has to go. Somehow he has to go. I can't stay with the player. So those are the things, those are the kind of regulations if we go. Now, like the previous one I talked about, for example, the, the, the federation saying that you must have two players from your reserve team on the 18 on match day. I mean... If I am competing professionally, I mean, you cannot 
impinder what I'm going to do. You are telling me that uh, I should do this because that is the rule that I should have two players for my uh, youth team from last season. No, in professional football, that cannot work. I will play the players that I need to play. Yeah? Maybe you come and say, since we want to protect Ugandans, we shall say that we, we cannot have three or four foreign players on the field at a specific time. That one we can understand and say, okay, we're trying to protect our game. But you cannot say again, I without quality. Suppose my youth team has no quality because youth the, the quality of youth team sometimes depends on the strength of the football club. If the football club is big and it has money, then you are likely to um, have better players because I'll give you an example. KCA Football Club has one of the best youth teams in the country or uh, Vipers. Why? Because of their financial muscle. Because now you can get the best players, the best youth players in the country. Now, it will be unfair for you to tell a certain other club that you see, you have to use your youth players and yet for you to get youth players of that quality is not easy for you because these youth players these days even demand salaries. They demand transfer fees. So you are telling a club that has no money to pay even their senior players to have a big chunk of youth players who they cannot pay. So they will not have good ones. They will just have the ones that are around on the village because I have been in this thing for long. I was uh, in Maroons, I was in Barara, I was in Onduparaka. So, I know what it means to have youth players on your, on your team. It's actually not as easy as people think that. Uh, some people actually won't have youth players, but they cannot afford them anymore because the market has uh, become so. The, the road generations of the league should take shape. If you do a professional uh, league, let it be professional. Financially, it should make sense. It should make sense in the rules and regulations and the way we administer it. Then, the other point would be the financials. I've asked my friends very many times this question. Does Ugandan football make financial sense? And I, one time I asked a, a person and said, okay, if you had money, if you had money and somebody gave you, or you, you made your money, you have probably uh, 10 billion Ugandan shillings, would you invest in football? And nobody seems to be answering this question. But I'll, I'll put it out there for you and tell you that it is not viable to invest in Ghana football at the moment for financial gains because nobody wants to invest in something that they are not going to uh, rip out of. I mean, business-wise. Why would somebody have money, bring money, and sink it in something that is not going to bring money? Does it make financial sense? Does it make financial sense? Because how much, for, uh, you, there was a saga, for example, between Villa and, uh, especially Villa, where uh, Mr. Misaga, uh, previously, the, the previous president, uh, Mr. Mwema, those people sunk in a lot of money, but you'd, you'd hear some corners and say, no, those people want to make money out of the club. But you ask yourself a question. If somebody buys players worth 300 million, for example, because uh, these people invested that kind of money. 300 million shares, they buy a player 20 million, they pay 15 there. So you find that they have invested that kind of money. But what is, for example, what does this club sell? What is this club selling? They sell, okay, let's say they sell much day tickets. What is the average attendance of a villa game? You find maybe. Let's say 1,000, okay, 1,000 people. That is even at the high side. How much is the, how many people are in without paying? The journalists won't pay, the coaches won't pay, the players won't play. So you find that there are more people in the stadium who have not paid. And then, so what is the return on investment for this owner of this football club? Or the person who has injected this money, who pays transport allowances, who pays uh, training allowances, who buys food, who pays salaries, uh, grounds and what. So what is the return on that? So we must make sure that we make a kind of semblance of the league that actually is financially viable. Financially viable means that you, you make rules and regulations that allow people of interested people to come into the sport to inject this kind of money and allow them to reap from it. Because that's the only way you make money. But if somebody, is, if you have stringent rules and uh, what, where am I going here? I'm going to the sponsorship for example. The sponsorship of the league. Now, if the league 
the person who's posted in the league or not okay the tv somebody buys the tv right but for that matter the one that has the rights these days has the rights almost to everything the to the sponsorship the name on the ad, i mean for 50 million the person who has the, the rights right now bought them for 50 million shillings or 50 or there so for a whole season so what is 50 million shillings for the club owner probably this is nothing so and I've been putting it to the people up there and saying, okay, fine. Wouldn't it have been better for us not to sell these TV rights, but give them to somebody who will actually televise us and people are watching us? For example, wouldn't it be better to be watched for free on a station that millions of Ugandans are watching? Because it will make financial sense. One, because the sponsors will actually sponsor you. will give you that kind of money that this person is giving us. The 50 million or 60. Anybody, if if a sponsor knows that you're being watched by a television station that is being watched by, uh, we are 40 million people from Uganda. Now, how many people are actually watching as, uh, those local TV stations? Many. At prime time, many people are watching them. So, isn't it better to be on those, your game uh, telecast on that TV station for free? Then, then, people advertise on that TV station and give you that kind of money. I think that would be make a uh, better financial system, locking ourselves in, uh, for example, a deal that, uh, 10-year deal to put us on television of which nobody is actually watching. Because I want to know how many people, for example, last season watched the Ugandan League on television. Not many. People actually, because of the inaccessibility of that kind of, uh, the, the person showing the, what, the league. Then, the kind of clubs uh, we are talking about here. What kind of clubs are we talking about? Okay, FUFA has tried as much as possible to educate people about uh, the club. Then we have the club licensing. Okay, people go through the club licensing. But after they have gone through the club licensing, can you look at these four clubs? What have they put in place? What have they put in place? That's why I was asking the question, do we need 16 teams to be in this league? Is it too early for us to have 16 teams? To, to be playing in this uh, in the top tier league because the other, the other question we were, we were asking one time is what about the relegation is it prudent to relegate somebody who has been the league and gotten these these uh, criteria and bring somebody else who is going to start again or isn't it better for them to play a playoff with the person going down so that we can get so these are the things because other other countries are doing it Germany is doing it because they, they give an opportunity for a playoff for the, the third person to go down because we, they presume that that team is uh, in a much better standing position than the team that is coming up. So they, they, but if the team is coming up is better than them, beats them, no problem. I think South Africa does the same thing. Why really get three that are compliant and bring three that are non-compliant? Why not maybe two go down and the other one is given a chance of uh, staying up. So these are the things that we need to look at. The pointer to make our league a bit stronger. Now when our league is stronger the chances are that it will produce these footballers who will earn. The league will be a source of income for everybody. Not only uh, uh, not only the, the people who administer it because at the moment the league in Uganda the beneficiaries, the biggest beneficiaries are the people who run the league. Not not the people who participate in the league. Because the, the biggest participant of the league is the owner of this football club. So if the owner of the football club is not earning anything out of it and they're injecting this kind of money, what is, what is going on? Then uh, our league also being punctuated a lot by... Um, uh, you punctuate it a lot with uh, clubs that are predominantly government institutions. Now... We're asking ourselves, why doesn't Ali grow? It's because we we grew this game from long time ago in the early seventies, and we did not break down this uh, this kind of what and this this kind of uh, system where government corporations played football, and those are football clubs that were, and we still uh, held onto them. Why? Because it helps. These uh, institutions are actually helping the federation to run the league. We, you run the league by having these clubs that can invest money with no return. Okay. Many. 
you can name them. You got Revenue Authority, KCC Football Club, Maroons Football Club, Police Football Club, all these institutions. They they actually looking for mileage in terms of PR. But in footballing terms, it doesn't make sense because these clubs, most of them institutions, don't even have fans in the football club. So they have no responsibility to anybody. And that's where some things can happen. And uh, for example, when Paul was saying uh, clubs that can, uh, when you have this thing that clubs can throw a games and what, because a club can throw a game because they have no responsibility towards anybody. Because a club like Sports Club Villa, uh, Express, K um, KCC, because KCC integrated but still not com completely integrated. Uh, Ondu Paraka Football Club, those clubs cannot, they, when the players are playing or the officials are officiating, they are doing it on behalf of somebody. But the ones that are doing it on behalf of, of somebody, but themselves, then that creates uh, a lacuna in a professional league uh, setup. So the kind of clubs that we have, it can either push it professional or not. Because uh, when small clubs, okay, when individual clubs, for that matter, put out uh, a point and say, no, 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 the, the sponsor is giving us little money. These institutional clubs will not don't know anything about little money because the money they are spending is uh, from government resources. So they actually have no responsibility to anybody. That is why you find that uh, these ones will push and say, no, we play. Because this, they are going to get this money from the government coffers. Now, the individuals will come up and say, okay, we have to look for money uh, from ourselves. So... Th th that is where the lacuna is. The professionalism. We must professionalize this sport, but how do we do it? How do we do it? We must find parameters. Which are those parameters? And I said, maybe from top, we go back to the laws of the country. The minister hasn't done a lot. Mr. Wakabulidi hasn't done a lot. He has been minister for sports, I think, for the longest time. He hasn't done a lot in this. Uh, he has seen and presided over some of the worst things in, in Ugandan football. Uh, the federation laws. We must make rules and regulations that do not only serve us but serve everybody. Then the interference of the federation in the running of the professional sport. You have to have the independence of the body, the regulations of the league, finances, how we handle the finances. The, we, uh, I haven't talked about the club leaderships also. Who leads these clubs? Who are they? Who are the owners? What do they want? Do we look at their interests and the sponsorships that we are we are giving and finally the tv the tv we must give we must be watched because the more you watch the more money you're going to get from the people watching so that is my take on that i mean uh, you can hit me up on my youtube channel uh, ask me the questions and uh, give me the topics that you want us to discuss i mean football is a discussion nobody can come up and say that uh, uh, so and so knows it all. You can't know it all. That's why football is the most interesting game in the world because everybody has an opinion. So let me hear your opinions. Have a good evening.